And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for the Shadow Isles section of our Call of the Mountain expansion review. This is going to be coming out on Wednesday. We will have all of these new cards to be able to play. Uh, we spent uh, one video talking about the Freljord cards already, one video on the Ionia. We're now on Shadow Isles. And then we'll spend two videos kind of breaking up the Targon cards because there's a lot of Targon cards with it being a brand new region. So we'll spend two videos on that. There's also one Demacia card and one PNZ card. Um, we'll see if I can find somewhere to throw those two in. They're both pretty cool little cards. Anyway, let's start with Shadow Isles. And we're going to start with the champion. This is just like the other two videos. These uh, cards are listed in the mana cost order going down. We're going to uh, start with our new champion and then we're gonna start from the bottom and go up from there. Okay, so we're gonna go up mana cost wise. I'm sorry, I can't refilter it, but that's what we're gonna do. All right, so our new champion is uh, Nocturne. Four mana, five, three, fearsome. Has Nightfall, grant an enemy vulnerable, and give enemies minus one, minus zero this round. And it levels up when we've attacked with five plus Nightfall allies. So Nightfall is a brand new keyword. What it means is that whenever you play something that is not your first card to play during a turn, then it can get the Nightfall bonus. So you have to play... So you need to play a card, any you know any card. It can be a spell, it can be a unit, it can, it can be whatever. Play that first, and then after that, then you can play Nocturne, and then it will be Nightfall or any other unit. Then you'll have your Nightfall after that. Um, so that that's what it means. So in order to play Nocturne on turn four and get the Nightfall bonus, you need to have some spell mana and play a spell that costs you know whatever spell mana that you have. Um, but just on its own, a 5-3 Fearsome for 4, pretty good. You know, 5-3, that's the stats of Ash, 4 mana, 5-3. Um, with the Fearsome, you can kind of compare it to Callista. Callista is the 3 mana, 4-3. We're spending an extra mana, but we're getting an additional power. Um, but then Callista doesn't have any, like, ability too much on its own. Like, you know, once it levels up, it does. Um, but this can have, like, the ability on its own of... You know, granting an enemy vulnerable and give all of your enemies minus one, minus zero this round. We've seen how that's super powerful with Frenzied Skitterer, giving all of your enemies minus one, minus zero. Uh, you get to do that, plus you give something vulnerable. Plus it's fearsome, so this could work out with com com uh, Binding Nocturne with other fearsome cards, where you can give your enemies minus one, minus zero, so that it makes, makes it so only four powers before would be able to block but then also giving something vulnerable, you can you can grant you can grant whatever you want, but you could grant like the very largest enemy. Maybe like they only have one enemy that can block the your fearsome units. You give that one vulnerable. You can challenge it with like a, a unit that you have that's not fearsome anyway, so they would have been able to block anyway. And uh, you just have the large unit be able to block that, and you can get in with all of your other fearsome units that would then be unblockable. So that's an option. Uh, for you there and then the level up is whenever you've attacked with five plus nightfall allies so now this isn't this isn't completely clear um oh cool all right grace claw grace claw uh redeemed a donation deck for a, a teemo puff cap with nightfall okay i will build one of those absolutely because yeah that's the thing about donation decks you can have you can ask me to build uh whatever and i will do that um, anyway, so this isn't 100% clear of how it says you've attacked with 5 plus Nightfall allies. Let's say you play Nocturne, and Nocturne is the very first thing you play during the turn. And so you do not get this Nightfall um, bonus because it's your first card. But then, you know, you attack with Nocturne because they don't really have anything that can block it. Does that count as attacking with a Nightfall ally? Because you didn't... You didn't play it with Nightfall bonus, but it does say the word Nightfall on it. I believe that answer is yes. I believe it still counts as a Nightfall ally, even if it doesn't get the Nightfall bonus. Um, from watching like the little YouTube video of it being played earlier, I believe, yes, that, that they will just stay as Nightfall allies. 
Um, but I'm not 100% sure on that. That will obviously change how good or how easy it is to level up Nocturne. If it's if you can play, like we'll get onto this onlooker in a little bit, it's a one mana card with Nightfall, but maybe you just want to play it on turn one and attack. Does that count as one of your five attacks with a Nightfall ally? We'll have to um, we'll have to find out. Hopefully, yes, and so then therefore it'll be easier to level up Nocturne. Hopefully. Um, so then anyway, uh, whenever you do have a Nocturne leveled up, it's a 4 mana 6-4 with Fearsome. You know, it just gets that plus 1, plus 1. And now it gives all of your other allies now have Fearsome. That is super powerful. You know, it's not it's not just like the, the card with Deep that gave all of your other sea monsters Fearsome. This just gives all of your other allies in play Fearsome. And whenever you play a unit, you give all of your enemies minus one, minus zero this round. So it turns every single unit that you play into a Frenzied Skitter that gives them all the minus one, minus zero. This can be super powerful. This can be a way, kind of like Ash, how Ash can just kill people from 20 with making it so none of their things can block. Nocturne can do a very similar thing of not allow any of their units to block. By giving all of your units Fearsome, you play two or three units when you have a leveled up Nocturne in the late game, um, give your enemies minus two or minus three, minus zero, and now they can't block any of your fearsome units. Um, so yeah, so that sounds that sounds pretty sweet. So yeah, Nocturne, a good champion, and really how good Nocturne is is going to be dependent on the amount of good Nightfall allies and how easy it is to level this up. Um, hope you know like will whenever you attack with a one you know you play a one drop with nightfall so it doesn't get the bonus you attack does it still count towards nocturne that's going to be a question that i don't really know the answer to those of you those of y'all watching on youtube if you know the answer to that question feel free to leave uh the the comment there uh, but um all right so let's go over our other shadow Isles cards now nightfall is nightfall as a keyword is not just in shadow isles it is it is in um, Targon as well, but we'll talk about the Nightfall cards in Targon. Um, there is another Nightfall champion. We'll talk about those whenever uh, the next video in Targon Part 1. So there'll, there'll be more cards we can see that will make Night, uh, no Nightfall and Nocturne even better. All right, so the first one here is the Stygian Onlooker. One mana, two, one with Nightfall. Give me plus two, plus zero, and Fearsome this round. Um, at first, whenever I read this card, I wasn't as excited about it. But also at first, whenever we played, whenever we read this, we didn't know about Nocturne yet and didn't really know about all the other Nightfall stuff. So I'm definitely more excited about this because I think this is a really good enabler uh, for that level up ability of Nocturne. It's especially if you can play it on turn one and attack. Uh, but it's a it's a decent card to play on turn one you know two one that's nothing ex too exciting that's nothing worth um playing that much but that that nightfall bonus of giving it plus two plus zero and fierce in this round makes this card amazing in the later game like let's say it's turn six and you play whatever card to start with and then you have like two of these in your hand you, know, you play like a four drop or something and then you can play Onlooker, and then another Onlooker. It's one mana, and you're getting four power and Fearsome. So it's not like they can just throw a little 1-1 one, one in front. Like, that can, you can have basically one mana Decimate. Um, that's going to make it really difficult for your opponent to block. Like, they don't want to block with their five mana unit to, you know, with your 4-1 Fearsome. Um, sure, it's vulnerable to, to removal spells with only the one health. But that can be... A lot of pressure especially in a deck built around uh, fearsome in general um, yeah that is true if you have like warning shot on turn one or any other zero mana spell you can go warning shot you can play this attack for four on turn one um, you know now they're at fifth you know if you go warning shot then onlooker now they're at 15 <laughs> that's a ton of pressure uh, but still I I like one like Having a one drop that scales to be a really good card in the late game is awesome. Like that's the kind of one drop you want to play because then it's it's a good card to draw later on as well. So onlooker looks pretty strong. Um. <clears throat> All right, we have shroud of darkness, and then, so like that's kind of the thing about 
waiting until you have more cards to do these reviews like I like to do. I like to, to wait till we have more cards because whenever this was previewed the very first turn or like the very first day it was previewed, I was just like, this card doesn't look very good because a one mana two one's not a card that you really want to play that much. We see a lot of one mana two ones that don't see any play. Um, but uh, yeah, the, with it having the Nightfall, it's an important one. All right, Shroud of Darkness, one mana burst. The next time you summon an ally this round, give it plus one, plus zero, and a spell shield. This is a wonderful Nightfall enabler. It's only one spell mana, not even, you know, not the, your unit mana, just one spell mana. You get to play this first, and now all of your Nightfall cards are enabled. Um, and also you can give something plus one, plus zero, and spell shield for a round. That's also pretty nice. So, like, let's say it's turn five, and you have your one spell mana. You can play your Shroud of Darkness, and then you can play your Nocturne, and give this plus one, plus zero, and spell shield for this round and then you can also play your onlooker and have another 4-1 fearsome and you know you can and that's just attacking with some a, you know a couple of great fearsome units on turn five but yeah shroud of darkness definitely going to be an important uh card to enable nightfall um all right next card we have for two mana we have unspeakable horror it is fast speed, drain one from anything. But then it also has Nightfall, create a random Nightfall card in hand. I like this card quite a bit. So think about um, think about Vile Feast. Okay, compare this to Vile Feast. Vile Feast is drain one from a unit and create a 1-1 one, one spider. This is drain one from anything. So that means Nexus as well. This can go upstairs and deal one damage to the Nexus. You don't have to just sit there and wait for there to be some kind of unit that you want to drain one from. And instead of getting a 1-1 one, one spider, you're going to sometimes get nothing if it's the first card you play, which obviously that's worse. But you know you don't have to play it first. But whenever you play it at Nightfall, you get to create a random Nightfall card in hand. So you get to create just a random card in hand that almost assuredly is going to be better than a spider token in play, just a zero mana one one. Which that's like you know a spider is basically like you're you know you don't spend any mana on it. You just get a generic one one. Um, so yes, yeah, so this is Vile Feast that can hit face that also can be card advantage that can replace itself and be a new card in hand and sometimes that card can you know could probably be pretty awesome so i i'm a big fan of unspeakable horror it's kind of like the difference between um hapless aristocrat and warden's prey that's kind of the difference you know it's similar to the difference between vile feast and unspeakable horror where hapless aristocrat's like a one one that all it does is get you a one one spider in play where warden's prey is the one one that gets that gets you a, another card in hand a last breath card it sometimes will be worse sometimes will be much 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 better though when you get like your avaros and century or legion grenadier or something like that that's just awesome and you have the extra mana so it's it's kind of similar to those those kind of differences if you want uh to see how it'll play out but um yeah i i think unspeakable horror can go in in a ton of different decks you can play it in um not only aggro decks, but you can play it in control decks as just being removal. You can do the damage to the Nexus also, which cards that deal damage to the Nexus, that's great for, you know, a lot of things. You know, like your Gangplank or your Sejuani, things like that. Like, think about, like, your Gangplank Shadow Isles control decks that are using Powder Kegs and then trying to have their cards do um, additional damage, like your Withering Whales with your Powder Kegs. You know, like that, that kind of deck, like Thresh plus Gangplank, or sometimes it's Twisted Fate plus Gangplank. Unspeakable Horror seems amazing in that kind of deck, where you can uh, deal Nexus damage also to help level up your um, uh, level up your Gangplank, and then also create a new random card in hand. So that seems pretty sweet. <clears throat> yeah, so good call there, Iowa. Good call. So yeah, that works great with uh, Sejuani and Gangplank, but you know, of course, we'll have to be in Shadow Isles with those regions. All right, now next card, Stalking Shadows. Oh, so let's put, I'm putting the cursor over the cards that I'm doing. Sorry, my bad. 
So the next card, Stalking Shadows. This card is one of the best cards in the set, in my opinion. Expansion, sorry. The set is all three. Um, this expansion and then October's and December's, all three of those together is the set. This one, so this expansion, Stalking Shadows, I think is gonna be a big player. So it's two mana, burst speed, um, pick a follower from the top four cards in your deck, you get to draw it and then shuffle the rest into your deck and also then create an ephemeral copy in your hand of that follower. So this is gonna be a draw two for two mana as long as you have a follower in the top four cards of your deck. So sometimes it will whiff. If your top four cards are like two champions and two spells, then you know you're you're gonna whiff and you don't get anything. So there will be times where this is you know draws nothing. But for the most part, this is usually going to be drawing two, where you draw a follower and then also an ephemeral copy of that follower. The amount of cards that you want an ephemeral copy, not uh, the amount of followers that you want an ephemeral copy of, is just really hard to state. <laughs> There's just so many um, cards that are great with ephemeral. You know whether it's Cursed Keeper, I don't know, Avaros, any anything with last breath abilities, basically, those are always very good. Anything with summoned abilities, anything with play abilities, those are all great with having your extra ephemeral copy. Plus, just having an extra ephemeral copy can really help out not only an offensive turn of being able to play an extra attacker, but also a defensive turn. Your opponent plays a unit before it attacking you play your ephemeral unit as a blocker now they're really even if it's just like a generic three mana three three just you know something really generic now now they don't really want to attack because you have like that three mana three three they can just block um so you know like you can really slow your opponent down great tempo play also for just a free card um yeah, it is kind of an odd order of the text, isn't it? It's draw it, then shuffle the deck, then create an ephemeral. You think, yeah, you think it'd just be like draw it and create an ephemeral copy of it, and then at the end it would say shuffle the rest of your deck. That's kind of weird. Also, um, it is kind of weird that it just even says shuffle the deck, because that's something that other cards don't say, that says that do things from like the top whatever cards of your deck, even though that it, it just automatically shuffles your deck. If you think about like, um, troop of Elnux that says just put how many Elnux in the top six cards, put them into play. It, it then it does shuffle your deck, but it doesn't say it on the card. So that's kind of different that it doesn't that it even says it. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Somebody in chat says that <clears throat> the onlooker. If you look at it, its eyebrows are like super long, but then whenever it's on the Shroud of Darkness, these eyebrows are not, not nearly as long. It is kind of weird, right? That it's different. Because it's definitely the same thing, like the onlooker. It's definitely the art of onlooker also. But I don't know why. Is this like a younger onlooker? And so it hasn't... This one is like older and wiser, and so it has longer eyebrows? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> um, so yeah, quite some randomness in here. But the thing, another thing that makes this really powerful is there are a lot of cards that care about um, spells, care about you playing spells. Um, like Lee Sin, for example, wants you to play spells. And so any of those cards that want you to play spells, you get a bonus for playing a spell, this is going to work out well. Maybe this goes with like Puff Cat Peddler that you can find you know, Puff Cat Peddler, find a Chump Wump that can, you can replay, you, you know, you can play the Ephemeral Chump Wump and get more Mushroom Clouds, and um, then with your, uh, you know, like, your Puff Cat Peddler, you get, you get the um, ability there, putting Puff Caps into their deck, because you're playing a spell. Um, same with Starlet Seer, kind of thing. Um, yeah, just lots, lots of ways to, to, um, use this card of getting, getting the, you know, you, you're still drawing your regular unit, and then you're also getting ephemeral copies. So you're getting two cards for two mana. You know, kind of like Glimpse Beyond, getting two cards for two mana. It's also burst speed. Can't counter it. 
<clears throat> you can use it in a really wide variety of scenarios. If you glimpse beyond on a unit with spell shield, do you still get the two cards? It's a good question. And I don't know the answer to that. <clears throat> I guess we just this is the first card I think with spell shield, and I guess we didn't really talk about what that means. Um whenever we went over this card. Spell shield is an, another new keyword here in Call of the Mountain. That means that uh, counter the first spell that is cast. Um, I think that's what it means, right? Or it's protection from the first spell. Um, I think... So I would think it would be no. I think that the answer would be no. Like if you, if you have a unit with spell shield and then you try to glimpse beyond it, I don't think you would draw the cards. I think that that would just be countered. I believe. Does this have the... Is it spell shield nullifies the next enemy spell or skill that would affect the unit. Yeah, so it's nullified, so no, not, nothing happens with it. And it would be, yes, so... Glimpse Beyond would not work on a spell shield unit. It would just be nullified. Yeah. Um, and yes, this does go... This, this spell shield does go away on round end... It looks like Spell Shield doesn't necessarily always go away on round end. We'll talk about that more with Targon. There are some units that, that just start by having Spell Shield, and it looks like, unlike a barrier that always... You know, units that start with barrier that always go away, it looks like the units that, that start with Spell Shield, that does not go away. Um, but some of these spells that say Spell Shield this round, so it's a, this round, it does go away at the end of round. Okay, so Spell Shield... Spell shield says only opponent spells. All right, so that that little text that we just read didn't mention opponent spells, but you're saying like the the actual spell shield text only says. So if I click on this thing, spell shield nullifies the next enemy spell or skill that would affect the unit. Okay, there we go. All right, so glimpse beyond would work, and it would. So you would sac so it just work like normal. You would sacrifice your unit, you'd kill your own unit, and then you would draw your two cards. Because it is enemy spell or skill. Hey Jorge, stream's going good. Um, I guess I have to get out of here, hit the back button, come back. Okay. Um, let's see. Unspeakable Horror. We already talked about that card. That's a, a really good spell, and that looks to be Nocturne's champion spell. So that's going to be that's gonna be Nocturne's champion spell as well. So that'll be a good removal spell that you'll have access to more times with Nocturne also. Alright, next card right here. Passage Unearned. Three mana, fast speed. Obliterate all units that were summoned but not played this round. So the the most obvious case scenario for this card is your opponent plays a harrowing, and with harrowing, you summon, you know, like six units, put them into play. You can then use Passage Unearned and obliterate all of those units that were just summoned. That's a really good use for Passage Unearned. The problem is, is I don't think that this card is going to be useful enough for it to be a card that's in you know just like a regular card that's played even in control decks or anything like that there are definitely different ways to summon units you know like chronicler of ruin you would kill a unit and then resummon it or you know thresh would summon a, a champion from the deck um so like if thresh plus aurelian soul becomes big you can use Passage Unearned to get rid of the Aurelian Soul uh, that Thresh would bring into play. I mean, it's just like corner case scenarios, you can see how Passage Unearned could be really nice. But it's just, will that happen a consistent amount of games that you'd actually play this? Because think about all the games like where you'd have this in your hand and it does nothing. I think in order to play a card like this, like you, with Shadow Isles, you probably want to be paired with like Piltover and Zon and Rummage where this is a card that has really high upside that it could be awesome but it, there's going to be a really wide variety of games where a really wide array of games where it does nothing and in those kind of games where it's not doing anything you can use your rummage cards to 
uh, get rid of it. You can discard it, draw a new one. Maybe you can play like the rummage units as well. Um, and so you can have a card like Passage Unearned that has high upside. Maybe maybe with uh, Heimerdinger. You know, it's your three mana spell with Heimerdinger. Who knows? But um, uh, yeah, you, so you do have that ability to rummage it away for when you don't need to. Um, yeah, so it could be. <clears throat> you know, we're in the Targon Part Two. We're going to talk about Aurelian Soul and all the things that it can do. Um, but yeah, it, it also has like some more summon stuff. So yeah, this this seems like a, a pretty a pretty narrow card. Um, and so finding finding room for a narrow narrow answer is tough. But it's probably good that the card exists so that if if harrowing, for example, harrowing would become just a huge part of the metagame and dominate, you have an answer here with a card like Passage Unearned. Um, yeah. All right, next card, Doom Beast, three mana, three two with Nightfall, and that it will drain two from the enemy Nexus. Pretty decent little card here. Three mana, three two is is a perfectly fine body. It's nothing. It's nothing special, you know, you can think about like um, three mana, three twos that we have right now. With Shadow Isles, the the one that comes to mind, of course, is the Dreadbloom Wanderer. That's a three mana, three two that has lifesteal and also tosses three, so that's an important card in your toss strategy decks. Draining two from the enemy Nexus could be something that, that um, is more powerful than what it reads originally. There is a, a three mana three two that does see a ton of play. The one in Bilgewater right now that I should know the name of, but I don't know why I'm uh, blanking on it. The three mana three two that brings along a one mana ally alongside with it. Um, yeah, I'm just blanking on the name of that card. Uh, but anyway, so three mana three two we have seen. You know that that's a definitely a playable body. I think really where where this could shine, yeah, Petty Officer. Thank you. I was just blanking on that card name. It's like, um, and so instead of bringing along another one mana cost body, if you have Nightfall, you get to drain two from the enemy Nexus, um, which is you know a total of four dam, you know four damage, I guess, like two two damage that they take and then two life that you gain. That's a you know four point swing. Really where this could see some good play, besides just being a, another Nightfall card for Nocturne, like where you just want a critical mass of Nightfall cards when you're playing your Nocturne deck, besides that, I could see this in little Shadow Isles uh, ping decks that are like these little aggro decks that play um, <clears throat> your Neverglade Collector kind of decks that has like your 2-4 whenever it dies you drain one this could just be another card that drains with like your neverglade collector and the uh three mana o3 i mean i am blanking on some card names the three mana o3 that also deals one to your opponent um man but anyway that's so that that could just be a more way for shadow isles to do nexus damage you can also pair that, of course, with your Unspeakable Horror, draining one from your uh, enemy Nexus. And this does turn into a lot of Nexus damage. Also, if you are playing, this could be a good card to be playing in that, that Gangplank uh, Shadow Isles control decks that we talked about how they use a bunch of powder kegs um, and like how Unspeakable Horror can also go upstairs to help level up Gangplank. Doom Beast just automatically, like you play whatever spell first and then you play Doom Beast. You just drain two from the enemy Nexus. That's more Nexus damage to help your Gangplank level up. And then it also just pairs with all of like the Bilgewater cards that's doing Nexus damage anyway. Um, so you you know you can have a lot of you know help help that out. Um, also all your Plunder cards. You know you can play your Doom Beast and then play whatever Plunder cards that you want. You know like your Black Market Merchant or anything like that. So Doom Beast could find some home in like Bilgewater style deck like that could find a home in nocturne decks that really care about nightfall can also find a home in your phantom prankster thank you your phantom prankster and neverglade collector style decks that are playing a bunch of small units and draining the opponent out 
with those where you can also have your doom beast drain as well so a nice versatile uh, card that can go in a lot of different places but it's not it's not like too powerful though it's not like if the you know it's not even like a three mana three three with it being a three two uh, it's kind of easier to answer um, so yeah it's not like overly powerful but it's it fits in a lot of a lot of spots all right we have our next card here four mana burst speed risen mists summon a mist wraith this card's pretty sweet this is you know, you want to be playing this in a heavy Shadow Isles deck with pairing it with Mist Wraiths and also with your Wraith Callers that can bring Mist Wraiths. There's just more ways to get even more Mist Wraiths in play. Um, and this is pretty sweet. Like, this is a burst beat, so you get it as a blocker, right? So, like, they attack in at the beginning of their turn with their attack token, thinking that you're not going to have a blocker, and then boom, Rise in Myths, you summon a Mist Wraith that's maybe a, a 3 2, maybe a 4 2, maybe a 5 2 by then and you just suddenly have like this you know five two blocker that they weren't expecting so pretty nice card and, and mist wraith is is a powerful card with having fearsome and just more and more ways to put him in i think this makes a lot of sense at four mana with it being spell mana and burst speed i think that makes that more sense at four mana i think at three mana we were looking you'd be looking at a super good card i think four mana is is where it's going to be a little bit more um level a little bit more even i think that that's uh, a little bit more fair i think that's a, a good good cost for burst speed mist rates um yeah yeah this right if it was if it was like fast speed then i think you'd want to be like three i think you'd want to be like three mana at slow or fast speed but then if you bump bump it up to the power of burst speed go into four mana it makes sense so cool little thing it can be a nice combat trick um you know on the defensive end with uh with not only your mist wraith being you know like a, a five two but then you also turn like a four two mist wraith that you already had in play turn that into a five two as well this could also be a great card for alpha striking like let's say all right they pass the turn to you you now have the attack token on your turn and you it's like turn six and you have your six mana plus you had two spell mana so you have eight mana. You can just go rise and miss, rise and miss. Play like two of them. Get two big mist rates that are fearsome. Now attack and you know alpha strike like that. Um, so it's also a pretty sweet uh, surprise offense card as well as a surprise defense card. Um, so yeah, I think this is definitely playable, especially with with uh, mist wraith and wraith caller, and and uh, we should see some more of that with shadow owls these days. All right, so we talked about Nocturne already, another cool champion. So, so far we're three for three on champions that look to be pretty fun to play, pretty good, powerful champions. We had two other spells. Um, this one is going to be Encroaching Shadows. Four mana, again, burst. We haven't seen hardly any spells that are not burst. <laughs> Poor Deny. But another burst, and it says grant all allies in deck and in and hand plus two plus two and ephemeral now this is one that maybe i'm underrating but i just don't see this being that great or seeing a lot of play now where i think it could shine is with shark chariot where you can have a lot of more ephemeral units to help bring keep bringing back shark chariot and of course your units are going to be very large um this doesn't affect the units that are in play so you can still have the units in play for attacking but it just seems like if you're granting all of your allies in your deck and your hand ephemeral you're just never going to be able to block again this is going to be this is like an anti-control card like if you're playing against if you're playing against a deck that's just trying to remove all of your units and you don't really care about blocking then this could be great but i don't know like Everose and hearth guard gives all of the allies in your deck plus one plus one and you also get and cost five mana and you get a five five body attached to it this you know you get a plus two plus two and it's your it affects your allies in your hand as well and it gives them but then it gives them ephemeral which is kind of a downside, not an upside, for the most part. Um, and it costs four mana. So yeah, 
have this with elusives so then your, your elusives can hit one time and then that's it and then they die but then you just you can't block it's still gonna make it hard to race i feel um yeah it is spell me and burst not like hearth guard that's you don't get that that five five you can just never block you have to you have to win the game very quickly after playing in encroaching shadows or have a good amount of units already in play they're doing a good job blocking for you then if you have that like how many allies are you really playing afterwards um Yeah, you'd have to you'd have to have like a, a one yeah you'd have to try to go for like a one turn kill thing maybe like this with it doesn't like reduce the mana cost of your allies so you can't really get them out any faster they're just going to be a little bit larger hmm. I don't know yeah it's like yeah you're trying to I guess yeah you pair this with harrowing I guess yeah you. You're attacking with your stuff. Your stuff's going to die. Um, but you're just never blocking. And the thing is, is like, you get to only attack and you just never get to block. And your opponent can block still, but then also can attack. Like, your opponent gets to do both. Um, yeah, I agree. This is not something you just casually put in your deck. This is going to be... If you're playing Encroaching Shadows, your entire deck is built around Encroaching Shadows. This is a complete build around card. Um, you don't just kind of put you don't just put this in any deck. If you're playing this card, your deck is an Encroaching Shadows deck. But I I feel like this is the kind of card that a lot of people are going to be excited about for playing it, and they're going to be trying to play it, and they're not going to be winning. And they're gonna be like, what's going on? I feel like this is like a trap card in that in that respect. This is like flashy and looks cool, but won't actually win games. Yeah, so basically Borok Lindhorn. <laughs> um Yeah, I mean it is a four mana card that doesn't affect the board at all. Yeah. Yeah. This doesn't seem worth it. Who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they'll be end up being a really cool encroaching shadows deck that's that's strong. Um, maybe it is with uh, a fem maybe it is with. Um, it probably has to be with like elusives because you have to make it where if you can't block your opponent can't block also kind of thing. Or maybe with shark chariot. Maybe there's a way to get a bunch of shark chariots. And this can allow you to have more things help out your Shark Chariots. But the thing is, like, your Shark Chariots, they die, they come back. They're still going to be coming back as three ones. They're not coming back as five threes. This doesn't affect those. I don't know. Um, yeah, maybe, okay, yeah, maybe this helps with your Phantom Prankster Neverglade Collector deck that... All of your, you know, like you play whatever things and they die immediately. Like you play um, Hapless Aristocrat, it dies. You get those those things and then and then you can still get your spider to block with. I, I don't know. Seems, I don't know. I mean, with the Undying, but how are you out racing anybody with the Undying? Like, they're just going to out race you. They'll just block your the Undying and then... So like you're, you're, you're the Undying will be a 4-4 Ephemeral, and you'll attack, and then it will die, and now it will come back as a 3-3 that still can't block. Um, I, no, I guess it, no, I guess it would keep the plus 2, plus 2, so I guess it would come back as a 5-5. Five five. But then it won't be Ephemeral anymore whenever it comes back. I don't believe. It just doesn't seem like that's going to be defeating the opponent. Like they played, they played the card hapless aristocrat. You you lose. All right. Anyway, uh, last card, dusk rider, five mana, two five with fearsome. Looks like a lot of these uh, shadow isles cards, especially these nightfall cards, are pretty fearsome. It's another nightfall card. Grant me plus one plus zero for each time we have activated nightfall this game. 
Whenever I first read this card, this is like the uh, other one drop that I was not excited about this card at all. Um, but we do have a lot more fearsome things and a lot of cheap fearsome things. So I think this could reliably be a... Like, let's say reliably you have activated Nightfall three times um, whenever you play this card. And so it's a 5-5 five, five fearsome. So, you know, like, 5 mana, 5-5 five, five fearsome. Are we are we playing that in, in our fearsome deck? Like, maybe. It depends if we have to play it for more Nightfall cards, if we need enough Nightfall cards for Nocturne. But, you know, 5 mana, 5-5 five, five fearsome... This isn't anything special. We can see like Legion Legion General, the Noxus card. It's like a five mana four four fearsome, right? But then it, it can get a lot bigger. Uh, if I remember that card correctly. So it can be like a 11 11 fearsome and stuff like that. And that card doesn't really see play. It doesn't have any other. You know, it's not like Avros and Hearthguard that has another ability. It doesn't, it doesn't really do anything. Yeah, so Legion General is a five mana four four. When I'm summoned, grant me plus one, plus one for each uh, unit you've stunned or recalled this game. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to have Fearsome. I guess, I don't know why it doesn't say it has... Yeah, but it, so that has Fearsome as well. So I think it's very comparable to Legion General. Now, it is in a region... Legion General is in a region with Noxus that doesn't care about Fearsome as much. This one does... This is a, in a region that cares about Fearsome. And it has a keyword that has a champion that cares about that keyword. So with just those two things, you're kind of seeing how Dusk Rider could see more play than Legion General. We're also talking about Shadow Isles as a region that really doesn't have great 5 mana cards anyway. It's not like there's much competition. Besides the champions, like you have like Thresh as a champion, you're not really looking at like any great 5 mana cards. There's like Ethereal Remitter, which is fine. Um, not like a great threat at 5 mana, so that, that could help out Dusk Rider of just not having very much competition uh, with this region with Shadow Isles, especially um, in decks that are heavy Shadow Isles, maybe with Mist Wraiths and stuff like that. Yeah, Scuttlegeist is also a 5-5 five, five Fearsome. Um, you know, it, it starts at 10 mana and, and the cost can get reduced. This one's always just going to be your 5-5. Five, five. Or your, always, sorry, always going to be your 5 mana card. So at first, I didn't think that, that this would see any play, but I'm I'm starting to see it because we have the champion that cares about that keyword. That's an important thing. And there's not much competition in Shadow Isles at the five mana spot. Um, yeah. All right, so there's Shadow Isles. There's our uh, next region. That's all of our, our fearsome cards here. Um, those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button and leave those comments. What are you really excited about? What kind of decks do you want to see? What do you want to see me build? Um, and just any other, anything that we forgot about in this video or just anything else about, um, this set, about Call of the Mountain that you want to talk about, leave those comments. But thank you so much for watching this, uh, Shadow Owls part of the Call of the Mansion, Mansion? Call of the Mountain Expansion review. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.